everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Coffee with the Critters, where we live stream here every Sunday morning on the Animal Behavior Center's Facebook page at 9.30 a.m. Eastern, unless we have a guest on, um, and those are usually done at 9 a.m., depending on the topic. Um, so for those that may be new, good morning. My name is Laura Joseph, owner of the Animal Behavior Center. We're an international educational center where we teach people all over the world how to empower animals through training, behavior modification, enrichment. Um, and we do that through our live stream services where you can, our memberships where you can find on our website at theanimalbehaviorcenter.com. So happy March, everybody. <laughs> It's um, the weather's getting warm here, warmer. We're starting to hit the 50s, sometimes the 60s, and then the next day back down into the 20s. Um, so for those that may be interested in finding out more about what we do, you can find that on our website, theanimalbehaviorcenter.com. You can also um, email me directly and you can find that at Laura, L-A-R-A, at theanimalbehaviorcenter.com. Usually after every Sunday morning live stream, I do get um, several emails and I appreciate hearing from you. Some I don't respond to right away, but I will respond to all of them. Um, we get things like, um, you changed the topic on me and I rearranged my work day to be here. And uh, so I apologize for that. I did change the topic two weeks ago. Sometimes that happens. Um, usually it doesn't, but sometimes it does. Uh, Cause I like to go with the flow and this is a free service. Coffee with the critters is a free service that I offer to everybody who cares for animals. Um, and I'm doing my best. So uh, everybody that knows the work that I do, I keep the quality of care and the health of the animal top priority in my work. And if you are showing that you are giving them good care, you will be up there, not right next to them, but maybe just right below them. I'm just kidding. No, I'm not. Um, but yes, everybody that knows the work that I do, I will give the people everything I've got. If you are showing me, you are truly dedicated. So good morning, everybody. We've got Eva and Tim and Ray and Ruby and Lisa and Shannon, Judith and Therese and Lauren and Iris. Um, good morning, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Coffee with the Critters. You can find our events. Um, right here on our Facebook page. Uh, my manager, Karen Pratt, usually takes care of those for me. We do have several events coming up that I probably aren't even on there. Um, I'm getting ready to present to St. Xavier University. After that, um, I've been contacted by Michigan State University's uh, veterinary um, division. I'll be presenting to them um, probably later in March or in April. So, Let's see if we can get this crazy world back on track. It's like it's one thing right after another. Um, so you can also join our email. New hey Samantha, good to see you. Hey Sharon, that was on last week, and Beth, I'll see you one of these days. Um, where was I? Oh, you can join our email newsletter list, which is located right here on our Facebook page. Um, or you can find that on our website, on our email newsletter list. The awesome Therese Kokowoda helps um, take care of that and getting that out. Um, it will show you past replays of Coffee with the Critters. It'll show you different things we have coming up. If we have different webinars getting ready to become available. We have workshops becoming available. Um, you can find that all there and you can also find past replays of coffee with the critters on youtube so we get a lot of people asking for replays or a lot of people say i'm not on facebook you can find it on our youtube account um let's see a couple of things before we get started good morning diane and sandy and carolyn and Lori. 
um, and Sheila, Samantha, and Diane. I'd like to get a hold of both of you and bring you both back on Coffee with the Critters here sometime soon, very soon. I know we've got a guest coming up. What is today? Today is caregiver burnout. Next week is Q and A. Ooh, after that, March twentieth. Definitely want to watch that one. I'm going to be live. This is going to be a new one. I'm going to be live streaming with um, Lelania, who is going to be working with some raptors, and I am going to be live streaming side by side, giving her advice. We'll move them. This is what you need to do. Speaking of raptors, never mind. I'm going off topic. Just listen to another episode of one of my favorite podcasts this morning called Paleo Nerds about dinosaurs. Mm, gotta love the dinosaurs. That is why I love birds, but definitely not limited to, okay? So, Therese asks, we got high winds today, so I gotta keep an eye on them. Um, Therese asks that I go in more detail. Um, good morning, Sylvia. Speaking of having guests on, Sylvia as well. Remember, was it last? No, last week was with Sharon, which was, we got great feedback. The week before that, um, remember I said I want to start a new topic in the episode about where I pull things off of my phone um, and do a live stream about all these different things I'm pulling off my phone. Good morning, Debbie. Um, we asked for, I got great feedback on that episode from people saying they liked the content. So I can be a very unorganized person. It is a very organized mess in my head. And I am trying so hard this year to get more organized and it's already happening. And I'm using applied behavior analysis on myself to make that happen because applied behavior analysis is the science of behavior and behavior modification, and it does work. My whole business is based around it. Um, if for people who don't think it works, don't understand how it works. Um, so I was like, all right, I've got all these, I think I have 5,000 videos or something like that on my phone and they need to be organized. This is lost training that's just floating in Lara land, um, which can be very scary, but in not boring place to be. And I need to get these photos organized. So, and that's in my downloads folder. It's in my phone, it's on my computer. So it started working. I was like, all right, if I start pulling these photos and videos, and making a live stream out of them on Coffee with the Critters, it will force me to organize them. And that's exactly what I was doing last night at five o'clock when I was getting prepared for Coffee with the Critters this morning. I was pulling photos and videos from last week's live stream and I was like, I can't trash these. They'll be lost forever. So it forced me to open my folders and organize them. So I would like to have that live stream quite a bit because I've got a lot of organizing and it's going to be beneficial to you because you're going to see training from 10 years ago, two years ago, um, of all different species of animals. And it will force me to talk about it. Well, it won't force me to, but it helps me get organized to talk about it. So, um, okay. So we got a lot of feedback from we got a lot of feedback from people on what we su suggest we call this. And this is what I came up with. I was doing this last night. Tell me what you think about it. I love that bad ass photo of that eagle. Um <laughs> that when I saw that I was like, "Yes." Train this beast, lest this beast train me." And I'm using beast in the best form possible. Um, so what do you think about it? Nails to tails, Laura's random acts of training. I really didn't want to put my name in it. Um, but everybody was saying, you think you should have your name in it? I don't know. Do I use a bald eagle? What do you, do you guys like it? Do you guys like the way it looks? So you guys helped me put this together. So I was writing down all your ideas People were emailing me, and Therese was saying, you need to bring this up on Coffee with the Critters tomorrow morning. 
Do you guys like it? Do you like the eagle? Do you like the nails to tails and the uh, subtitle Laura's random acts of training? Because <laughs> there's going to be a lot of stuff in there. <laughs> okay. So everybody likes it. Good. So thank you. So Therese helped me send out a newsletter. Was that last week, Therese? It must have been within the past week or week and a half. And Therese was asking, um, for your ideas. And I told Therese, I said, I could tell that's what you asked because I started getting emails saying um, different ideas for how to name this. So like it, I'm thinking I'm seeing people like it. So Karen Pratt, are you listening to this? Let's start scheduling. What do you guys think? A nails to tails every, I would love to see it every three weeks. I try to keep it spaced out like every six weeks. Topics will change every four to six weeks. The more I do nails to tails, the more photos I'm organizing. The more, and, and this is benefit you too, because the more photos that I'm organizing and putting in different folders, the more I can put webinars together for you, showing this is how this started and move to this and this and this and this. The more I can put more together to for you for Coffee with the Critters. You guys like it? Sylvia says, Tales from Lara's Training Co Chronicles. I like that too. I got to take a screenshot of that. <laughs> I can't believe I just said that. Let me take a, take a screenshot of that and add it to more of my cluster of mess of my <laughs> desktop photos. <laughs> That's what I do when I go through a day because I'm responsible for so much. I'm like, I'll never remember that. So I'm going to take a picture. I'll, remember, I'll take a picture of that. And then all these photos start accumulating. Um, okay. So thank you for the feedback. Um, so like I said, it's starting to get warm here. So today will be the second day. We're starting to get a lot of different animals out. Um, and here you will see the awesome dill came out of her enclosure, um, her winter enclosure. And here's pickles jumping around. Um, something else. Oh, we've got two more things for you before we get started on caregiver burnout. Those of you, I'm going to talk about what we've been doing in the Parrot Project and in Level 2. So, Sylvia, wait till you see the second photo I'm getting ready to show. Okay? So, in the Parrot Project, um, it's one of our services that we offer here through the Animal Behavior Center our online services, online learning. We have been talking about how to train recall, how to train an animal to come to you, uh, specifically a bird, not specifically a parrot because I'm not working with one right here. But this is Marula that came to us from best friends out in Kanab, Utah. And Marula is a Chiraco. I was told Marula is a very nervous bird. And Marula has been off contact. Now, if you guys are not working with birds, just keep whatever animal you're thinking about in mind. Nervous bird, fearful bird, meaning it, it fully flighted. You cannot just go in and force this bird to step up. Okay. Unlike a cockatoo, it's not going to rip your hand off. But um, I've been training it. We get it outside of its enclosure, let it fly around. And I never let an animal outside of its enclosure until I have it trained and know exactly what I'm going to do to get it back inside its enclosure. That's exactly what we're talking about in level two right now, which is our next photo. Um, but this is Marula. We are scale training and we are training him to, we've been doing all, nothing but off contact where we're training without physical touch um, because you know you're doing that anyways. If that animal can see, hear, smell, or feel you, you are training it whether you realize it or not. So this is a photo of Marula on my hand. And it's starting to happen every day where Marula is on my hand and now I'm able, and we're showing all this in the Parrot Project through the live streams, I'm able to start moving him. And two days ago, I was able to He's walking to my hand. He's not flying to my hand yet. 
that's going to be one of the next step he's walking onto my hand and then i'm moving my hand and i'm able to now put him on the door perch and shut the door whereas before he would just we'd call him to the door perch and then we would shut the door these are things that make me very happy it also photos like this that make me wish i would do something with my hair <laughs> before i do the photos before i take the photos but Sylvia is in level two and she said she needs to catch up. Um, yep, Marula is coming to the hand, Shannon. And then wait till you guys see this next one. It is a bird again, but that's okay. I'm working with different animals too. So we're live streaming with Red, the Red Rough Lemur in level two as well. And probably more than that, level two is really active on the live streams because I am taking you every single step of the way. Level two, our level two membership is where we train numerous species of animals. Our alligator training is getting ready to start back up in level two, so watch closely. All right, Shannon and Sylvia, ready? Ba -ba. Let's see if I can make that bigger. Boo -boo. Yep, this is Wilma, the black cask hornbill on my shoulder. Now, Um, what I was going to say is, why is this important? Because it's what Wilma wanted to do. It's not necessarily, I, I would like to say care less if Wilma's on my shoulder or not, but it's a, it's a nice feeling because I've earned her trust that much. But this was an animal that was as soon as Wilma and Fred, as soon as you just made eye contact with them coming in the same room, boom, they would flail themselves up against the enclosure um, and to see how far she has come uh, this photo was taken yesterday maybe the day before I can't remember where I wore yesterday uh, I think it was yesterday um, on my shoulder does she need to be there no I never had planned on getting her on my shoulder does she want to be there that's the question and she is showing me yes. So now I can be her vehicle. And but just to see how far the training your animals are learning from you, no matter what you do, they are learning. It's just are they doing the behaviors you want them to do? And um, one of my biggest quirks that makes my head twitch is when somebody says an animal is too young to train. In the world of applied behavior analysis, learning and behavior, there is no such thing as being too young to train. All right. Because training is learning and they're learning anyways. Are they learning what you want them to do? Probably not. If you are not active in that training, they are probably learning. They're learning anyways. In the first couple years of an animal's life, they are learning what gets them reinforcers. And if landing on your head, biting your ankles, um, screaming in your ear, barking at the front door is what you want, then let them, let them at it. All right. But the problem is then you have to, now you've got a behavior problem. And usually when a behavior becomes an annoyance to the person caring for the animal, that's when you think you have a problem. No, you've had it. You've had it. It's been shaped. It's been developing. It's just that it's gotten to this point where you're now annoyed as hell and you're finally going to do something about it. But then you get that history of reinforcement that you now have to counter condition. Okay. Doesn't even need to be. And that's what we do here at the Animal Behavior Center. So Taryn says never too young to start training in the rearing room. Yep in any room. Um, okay. So on to our topic of caregiver burnout. Um, this was a topic that was suggested to me and I'm sure this is a common uh, topic in the professional dog training world. Um, it's often an issue in the Burrowed care world. I've seen it 
so many times, so many times. And when I got started in this business 15 years ago, 16 years ago, I know people kept saying, Laura, you are going to burn out. You are going to burn out. When I started working more actively out here at the zoo, um, the person that one of the people that runs the zoo was telling me, I'm afraid you're going to burn out. I am, I am not going to burn out. I may burn out in certain areas. It, I think it is next to impossible for me to burn out in behavior training and enrichment and empowering these animals, behavior modification. Cause if I was going to do it, I would have done it by now. I've had, it's when you're overwhelmed with caring for an animal, for numerous animals. Um, it help, happens in the healthcare industry where a lot of times you're not taking the time for you. You're extremely overwhelmed with caring for all these different animals. And then sooner or later, something's going to give. I've seen caregiver burnout come into my area in different different cues because I'm always cautious of it because I definitely do want not do not want to burn out. Um, there's been times where I've thought I just need to get out of this business and I just need to go be a bartender down in Key West. I'm not going to be very happy for too long. Okay. Um, where you get so overwhelmed and so tired of just constantly providing care, providing care, providing care, and not taking time for you. I was just on a consultation the other day, and this is easy to happen, caregiver burnout, when you're working with behaviors such as separation anxiety. And I was telling this person, separation anxiety, if you're really working with separation anxiety, it's intense. It is intense and it's constantly all about a balance. You got to be constantly, especially in the beginning, watching and paying attention. Um, you've got to find balance because if you don't, you are going to burn out. And some signs of burning out that I have seen is things that I have once been extremely interested in. I have just completely backed away from um, some other things are just not taking the time to play with certain animals anymore. You just want to sit down and do nothing. You want a lot of times it can be all these animals around you. You just want everything to disappear for a while. Um, and like I've said, I've seen people get out of this that I thought that never would that have just completely burned out and and have walked away from animals that they said they would never walk away from. I have seen this numerous times and it's something that I'm constantly keeping an eye on um, because I have given, I've got 16 animals in this building and I train numerous ones outside of this building. I have shown these animals a way of life. And once I show them a way of life, this has always been in the back of my head since the day I've gotten into this. Once I empower these animals and show them a way of life that they can have this, I've got to make sure it stays that way for their sake. And this is what happens in my mind. This is coming from me and me only. I have shown them large enclosures. I have shown them you can run for acres. You can fly for long distances. Um, you have all this enrichment around you. You have this life full of training every day. I've got to make sure they can continue to have that because what happens is when that's taken away, what's going to happen to them now. And I'm trying to be very careful with what I'm saying <clears throat> because this isn't always possible. Life happens. As you guys know, I just lost my husband a year ago. Holy cow. I was fighting. I've been fighting for years to make sure I can keep my animals 
in the environments that they are. It's been a lot of stress on me, a lot. See all that stuff right there? <laughs> I have aged five years in the past two. Um, it's been a lot of stress and a lot of days that you wake up at three o'clock in the morning and you can't get to sleep. Last week, I was having nights where I just could not fall asleep and then I would wake up three hours later and get up and go back to work. I have to be very careful with stress, anxiety, taking on a lot. I tend to take on so much because, and I was just thinking about this and just having a conversation about this right before this live stream. Um, can I do it? Yes. Can I do that? Yes. Can I do that? Yes. Can I do that? Yes. Can I do them all together? No. And that's where I am. I have found myself in getting into over the past five years and slowly saying, okay, I can do that well. 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 Putting them all together and then taking care of all of these animals, you know, bringing in an income to make sure there's a roof over our head, making sure these animals are happy, making sure these animals are thriving making sure the team we have here at the Animal Behavior Center stays together, making sure it's managed well, making sure taxes are done. Um, all of that can pile up really fast, okay? And then, so I've been taking areas, I'm like, where can I make the most impact? That's what I need to focus on. And I need my team. Um, we have a team of workers and volunteers. I need my volunteers. I need my volunteers to be happy or they're going to leave. Um, and so I try to provide them enrichment in the form of, like Megan today, giving a sloth encounter, um, being involved in, in different things. That's a lot of work. So with, I have to be very careful. My eye is always open to compassion fatigue, caregiver burnout, because if I burn out, everything goes away. I can't ever see me standing up and walking away from all these animals. I've seen people do it. I'm scared to death and I would, will never say I would never do that because I've found myself in positions over the years where I thought I would never do things and it's happening and that's something called life it happens so some ideas to be careful about caregiver burnout is and i just had a conversation about this the other day and i was very adamant and very rarely will you see me angry but when i'm angry i'm pissed i've been pushed way past my comfort level and whatever i'm getting pissed off at just no longer matters to me if you are in my life anymore. So rarely will you see that because I only surround myself by things that make me happy, people that make me happy. If you do, if you cause me constant stress, you are out of my life. Um, because this is the only life I've got and I'm 51 years into it. Don't know how much more I've got left, but I see no end in sight, but I, was having this conversation with somebody the other day and I got very stern, what I would call stern, which is not me and my happy bubbly self, um, where I get very matter of fact, to the point, to the point. And I was saying, you, and I see so many people in the animal community not take the time for them. And I'd say within the past six years is the first time I was like, I need to start taking time for myself. If I do not, my animals' lives are on the line. Okay. That's when I started jumping back into going back down to Key West, flying out to Vegas to be with my family, taking off two days in a row. I've been taking off two days in a row for probably three, four months. All right. And when I walk out of here, I got a bazillion cameras on all these animals. But when I walk out of here, I'm like stopping at my sister's house, going out to dinner with my friends, waking up and staying in my pajamas until there's no need to take them off because it's time to go back to bed. 
<laughs> I've been doing a lot of that and it's extremely important. You have to take time for yourself because if you don't, caregiver burnout is going to start happening somewhere. I don't want to say I guarantee it, but I'd put money on it. It's going to happen somewhere and it can come out in the form of anger. It can come out in the form of looking and feeling depressed. And I'm not a specialist at this, so I'm just telling you what happens in my life. Start snapping on people. You've got too much on your plate. And you have to take time off. For the past couple of years, I've worked pretty much seven days straight, okay? Because major changes were happening in my life. And I, and at the forefront, we're making sure my animals stay thriving, keep a roof over their head, make sure my business keeps running, <clears throat> making sure my volunteers stay with me, making sure they're happy. Um, that's a lot. That's, I had to learn to cook in that time too. That sucked. Of all the injuries I have, people are like, what happened to your hand? Oh, I burned myself cooking. I didn't get bit by an alligator. I burnt myself cooking. Um, so if you do not take the time for yourself, you are going to burn out and your animals are going to pay for it one way or another, whether it comes in the form of you just stand up and walk away from all of it, or you walk away from part of it, or you walk away from certain species, or your heart just gets so hard that you don't a lot of people like i was thinking yesterday too i don't know what happened but for those of you that have seen me present you've seen me i used to do this a while ago i haven't done it recently because of covid but when i start out a presentation i will when i'm presenting to an audience i will talk about how i got into this and how i got into this was Rocky and I start telling Rocky's story and I start, start telling the story of how this is an animal that was professionally advised be euthanized for his behavior issues. Yet you guys look at Rocky now, look at him now. He is thriving. He is the sweetest animal we have here. That was a bird misunderstood. But what I was going to say is I used to start a presentation telling this story and I couldn't get through the story without crying. I could. And I had a peer tell me that you cannot cry in front of your audience because it looks very unprofessional. And I snapped on that person. And I said, well, then I guess I'm going to be look unprofessional because this is my passion and when something brings me to tears, it's something that is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen or something that scares me or something that my heart is so involved in. Um, so Susie's saying, I remember Sheila's saying, I remember I'm sitting here talking now, trying to not start crying again. Um, because when I, when I lose that tear, not the only thing that's going to happen, but maybe a part of my heart has hardened. And those are little keys that I pay really close attention to. And the reason that story starts bringing me to the edge of tears is because I almost did it. I was professionally advised to put Rocky to sleep. And I almost did it. I came this close. I came home crying to my husband saying, we may have to think about euthanizing Rocky. My husband, God bless his soul. He was just like, I can't tell you what he said. <laughs> but he's like, what the hell are you talking about? That is absolutely not happening. So that's when I took the steps and went back to school, started taking master level classes in applied behavior analysis. And I did it for no other reason but to figure out how to know better 
and do better by Rocky. And thank God I did. Thank God I did. Well, Rocky's thanking me that I did. Um, yeah, Susie says, I was at your first presentation and cried along with you. Um, it made such an impact. One of the many reasons I think, admire you so much. Thank you, Susie. Yeah, so I, I think I can get forms of caregiver burnout. I've seen it. I've seen it where I start thinking, maybe I just get out of this. Maybe I just move to Key West. Maybe I move to Washington, to places I've always wanted to go. Maybe I move to Montana and just people will never see me again and I'll just ride horses and herd cattle. That doesn't sound too bad. Because <laughs> it's one of the things I think about all the time. But I guarantee you, I would not be out of it too long because I have never seen anything that makes my heart so happy as what I do here. And Lindsay Douglas told me this. I have been so busy this past year that I've been doing a lot of managing and started to, instead of training. I was telling Kyle the other day, I was just like, training makes me very happy. And Lindsay took a photo of me two weeks ago. And I think it was with Marula on my hand. And she goes, she just looks at me and she's like, that, that smile on your face. I haven't seen it in a long time. You need to get that smile back on your face. And that smile only happens when you're training. Because when I'm training, I am, am empowering that animal. And I thrive on seeing animals thrive. That is what I will do until the day somebody cuts off my arms and my legs or I just physically cannot do it anymore. And once I get to that point where I physically cannot do it anymore, I'm gonna start writing about it. Okay, so be careful not to get into caregiver burnout. Pay attention to those subtle signs of not caring anymore, getting to breast, not being able to get out of bed, getting angry and snapping very easily. Because once it starts going beyond that, your animal's lives are on the line. Take, thank you, Shannon. And thank you, Sandy. And thank you, Debbie. Um, I'm starting to take two days off a week. I've been doing it for a couple of months and I just feel like I'm goofing off. I was like, there's so much work to do and there's so much work to do here. I could not sleep and work seven days a week and never catch up. And I've got the type of, in my head, I'm like, I've got to catch up, I've got to catch up, I've got to catch up. And probably about four months ago, I came to the realization, I was like, you are never going to catch up. You are never going to catch up. Do not let that stress you out. Just start making piles on your desk. And you guys, some of you have seen these piles on my desk. <laughs> if I could turn this camera away, around. Those piles are starting to decrease, but I don't need to have it decrease today. It may still be there in six months because I'm going to head out of here tonight, probably go have dinner with some friends and chill out. Today I started listening, or last week I started listening to my Paleo Nerds podcast again. I haven't listened to that in almost two years and I can tell you dinosaur facts and I can't tell you dinosaur facts anymore because I don't have the time to listen to the podcast. And that's when I start getting frustrated, angry, and I'll start snapping and this starts not happening anymore. So I'm going to make that happen. All right. So we are working on some things behind the scenes. Um, you're going to see some things happening that I've been thinking about for a couple of years. Um, but just stay tuned. <sighs> yeah. Breathe. Okay. Take the time to breathe. But so with that being said, if you guys, thank you guys, number first and foremost, thank you for attending this weekly live stream. I appreciate it. And Joanne Coco is thriving every time I think of you so often I was like if Joanne could just see this he now comes up to me and 
lays his head right here on my shoulder and I give him kisses and I hold him and he loves it. That animal has won another portion of my heart. Um, so Diane says, do things you as you, things that you love just as important for us as it is for the animals we work with. Yeah, and I was thinking today, I was like, I need to start taking a vacation. I was planning on going to Key West, but COVID keeps kind of putting the, the old snafu on this. You know what I'm going to do? And I was just like, I was driving to work today, listening to the paleo nerds, and I was like, where did I where did I lose that idea of that vacation? Uh, I think it was three years ago, I looked up top 10 areas in the world, but I'll stick to the United States for now, to visit dinosaur artifacts, museums, and I found them and I kept them. And I was like, that is what I'm gonna start doing for vacation. That was three years ago. I was when my husband not first started getting sick, but he was really into his sickness and I just lost light of anything to do for me. So I was thinking this morning, I was like, I need to pull that list up. And I'm heading to Utah and I'm going to go see these dinosaur museums and look at these artifacts because that makes me happy. That makes me excited. I need to come to New Jersey and see Samantha. <laughs> but anyways, okay, we're way over our half hour. Um, if you've liked some of the things you've seen here, take a look at our memberships, level one and level two. My annual memberships focus on their annual year-long live streams, Q and A's, um, enrichment ideas, um, how to videos of where to start target training, how to get this animal to come to you, how to get it to go into a crate, how to enrich its lives, how to make these toys that give it something to do when you're too busy to be with them when you're taking your two days off a week. Uh -huh. That's in our level one and our level two membership. We also, in our level one and level two membership, we also have our podcast. The last podcast, I forgot to announce it in level one and level two, was uploaded a week ago, two weeks ago, I can't remember, on overt and covert behavior. What does it mean? Why is it important? What does it look like? I give you examples because when you can identify these, you can start, it helps you better able to start understanding how to change behavior. And when we're working with animals, a lot of times we need to change behavior, behavior modification. And that's why we also have species specific. The parrot project is extremely popular. Um, the deaf dog project, the pig project. We also have our webinars, which are on our website, um, where you can find out, you can watch replays of webinars. I'm working on another webinar right now that I'm going to live stream. And um, if you're in some of our memberships pending, um, like if I live stream a webinar on parrots, if you are in the parrot project, you will have free access. Okay. Um, just an example. And also in addition to that, we also have our referral pr program. So for every five people that somebody's been, somebody's doing something out there because we are getting requests to join the parrot project like jelly beans on Easter. I don't know where that came from. Um, somebody's making mention of the parrot project because the requests to join are overwhelming. And I like that. So for every five people you refer to us that join the Animal Behavior Center, you or your organization will get one free online consultation. All right. Um, Jeannie, hey, Jeannie says, if you come to New Jersey, you better visit. You know, I will. I am on a mission to get out there and see you, the other Jeannie, um, Samantha. Um, so thank you for taking the past 45 minutes out of your life to spend with me noted. I recognize people's names, especially when you jump on here and say hello. Um, it lets me know you are my reinforcer to continue doing what I'm doing. All right. Um, thank you, Mark. Mark says he mentions the Parrot Project and bird groups all the time. I appreciate you guys. Have a great weekend. Happy spring. And um, 
Spring is right around the corner. If you have animals inside that need to get outside, you best be working on how you're getting them out right now. All right. Take care.